Welcome to the part 7 of the Runtime Fabric series. In this video, we will configure Network Load Balancer for the Appliance RTF. This is the current topology of our RTF cluster. We configured an ingress to allow external traffic to access our Mule applications hosted in the form of pods in the worker nodes. The external requests are now being routed through the ingress controller to the Mule pods. The ingress is a layer 7 load balancer and can balance the load between multiple replicas of the same application. From pods or worker point of view, we have load balancing provided by ingress. But what if we have multiple controllers? For example, let's have three controllers. Now always remember, controllers should be odd in number. Now who would balance the requests among the controllers? One approach could be DNS load balancing. Basically, you associate the IP addresses of the controller nodes to a single domain and the DNS would randomly resolve to one of the IP. But it's not a good approach because it's random and then if it is cached, the traffic will always go to one controller. We need something to balance the requests among the controller and this is where we front the controller nodes with a network load balancer. Now a network load balancer is completely different than application load balancer. The former is a layer 4 device whereas latter is layer 7 device. A network load balancer deals with raw TCP connections which means that you can route HTTP, HTTPS, gRPC or any other protocol that's built on top of TCP. It's a low level device which establishes TCP connections with the backend systems and facilitates requests through those connections. At the same time, it also ensures that the requests are balanced among the backends. Whereas an application load balancer deals with high level protocols like HTTP or HTTPS, it can deal with only one specific protocol. Unlike network load balancer, it cannot handle raw TCP. The application load balancer can read your requests, it can perform TLS termination, it can read the resource path, URI params, query params and headers and also decide which pod or app the request should be routed to based on the resource path. So this is basically a smart load balancer but supports limited set of protocols, only the high level protocols. And ingress is an example of application load balancer. So in our case, we will configure a network load balancer, which is an external component that sits out of the Kubernetes cluster and it will forward and balance the TCP traffic to the controller nodes. Now the certificate that we are going to configure, it will always be in ingress because network load balancer, it's just a dumb entity which only forwards raw TCP. And since TLS termination happens at application load balancer, so the certificate sits on ingress. So the network load balancer will just work with the raw TCP protocol and it will just balance the TCP connection among the controller nodes. And the next load balancing, it's already handled by our application load balancer, which is the ingress. From ingress, the load can be balanced across multiple pods on multiple workers. To create load balancer, log into your AWS account and in the EC2 dashboard on the left hand side, there's an option for load balancers. Click on it. I've already opened in a new tab. Once this page opens up, you can click on create load balancer. Once you click on create load balancer, you get a couple of options. What we are interested in is the network load balancer. So again, network load balancer is a charged service wherein you ch pay by the hour. Partial usage will also lead to a cost of one hour. So let's click, click on create. Once I click on create, I'll have to give load balancer a name. So let me give it as VP RTF 
demo nlb i'll keep it as internet facing ip address type will be ipv4 let me select the vpc so this is the vpc in which my uh, nodes are already i'll select the availability zone uh, there's already a subnet and it says that subnet for your internet facing load balancer must have a route to an internet gateway you can update uh, i'm not sure why this message is coming but i already have the route uh, to an internet gateway in in the subnet if you have uh, if you remember the previous video where we configured everything for rtf we already added a route uh, to the internet gateway from for 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 subnet mask so i'll ignore it let's see if we face any issues then we'll have to check back all right and ipv v4 address i'll select assigned by aws uh, let aws assign it for me then the listener uh, it's port 80 let me add one more rule for 80 and 443 so this is port 443 okay so i have two rules right now and now let me create a target group so target group is basically on which uh, targets or which ec2 instances i have to forward it so i'll click on target inside the target group we need to specify the group details so a target type uh, i'll select as instances the ec2 instances then the target group name so let me give it as uh, ep rtf demo tg and the port is tcp 80 i'll make it as 443 because our ingress will be listening on this port because any http will be defaulted to https that is how we configured the ingress uh, and the vpc is selected health check protocol tcp and let's go with the default for the advanced health check settings and let's click on next all right so now it's asking me to register target so this is the controller node that i want to register so i'll select this and let me include i think that this is the only place where i can click so yeah let's include this and it's included right now and the health status is pending okay now let's create the target group so the target group has been created successfully named as vp okay now it's time to associate a load balancer right now it says none associated right so let's go back to load balancer right now i don't see anything actually i don't need this anymore let me remove everything becomes 443 so i'll refresh this and now this time i have the target group right so any traffic coming on the network load balancer on port 443 will be forwarded to our controller node all right once this is done let's click on create load balancer all right and the load balancer has been created let's click on view load balancer I can now see the load balancer it's in state uh, provisioning so it might take a couple of minutes or something so let's wait until it provisions and then we can try to reach out to our application so after waiting for a couple of minutes the load balancer is now in active state now one interesting thing that we have got here is that we now have a publicly available a record which means that I can use this domain on the internet and reach out to my network load balancer and network load balancer will reach out to the ingress. So this is the A record that I've got and I've got it free of cost. It came with the network load balancer charges, right? So you can consider this as a vanity domain. Alternatively, if you, if you again want this 
to be changed then you can add a alias to this particular a record on the root 53 which again will be chargeable extra right so since we have a dns we can basically use this uh, this a record to query or to reach out to our mule application so i've done that already https the the a record that we have got for the nlb and then uh, the path which is our application name once i enter this i am getting that this connection is not private it's because it's my custom certificate right if i check this this is the one that we created right common name is this my company and delivery so will it work let's try that out let's go to advanced and let's just proceed it doesn't work instead it gives us 404 and by now you should be aware why it gives 404 the reason is quite simple we have seen this in previous video also it's because the common name is different than the one that we are trying to access the common name here is the private IP address uh, the private a record right if we, if I go here to the EC2 instance this is a private IP DNS so earlier in the last video we just went directly to the ingress we didn't have any uh, network load balance and that is why this there was a DNS already for available uh, DNS entry inside the VPC already available for this particular a record so we went ahead and used the same but in case if I still want to use it again I have two options I can go back change the common name of the on the certificate change it to this particular value and then I can directly access or else there's a workaround we have seen this previously as well right I'll use this I'll go to headers and inside header all I need to do is add this host header so once I add host header I'll have to give the actual domain or the common name placed in the certificate if I click send I should get a successful response now this time I am triggering over the internet I am using my local machine by opening its postman there is no putty or anything involved or no curl command right so I am directly hitting my postman and I am getting all the response and again if you observe the remote address and everything remains uh, similar uh, as to the one which was previously uh, the IP addresses have changed as compared to the previous one because I have restarted my cluster and that's the reason otherwise things uh, remain quite similar and what's important to see here is that you see the X forwarded for now earlier in our case X forwarded for was coming as the controller's public IP address because I was basically trying to curl from the uh, controller right now x forwarded for is this ip address this ip address is my own laptop's ip address it's, it's not that of a network load balancer because as you know network load balancer is basically blindly forwarding the traffic right it's a layer 4 load balancer it blindly sends everything doesn't rewrite or do any new connection it just blindly sends so forwarded for is not coming uh, it's not the value of the network load balancer IP address but rather my laptop's public IP address and rest of the things remain the same now in order to fix the problem we'll again go back to the same flow we'll create a new certificate so I'll use JKS all right now let's add new certificate I'll select RSA let it generate the key pair now in the name uh, common name we have to use this so I'll copy this paste it okay organizational name is totally let's give us delivery name as say my company locality name local All right, let's click on OK. This is the alias. Let's go with the same alias password. 
I would have changed the alias if I would have used route 53 and added an alias but I'm not adding it because I'll eventually end up paying for it so let's go with the publicly available which is coming free of now let's export this I'll use the export option export key pair select PIM password we give the same password all right let's export this PIM file it's exported one more thing that I need to export is the private key let's use pkcs8 password will be the same password export export is successful let's go back to platform I've already opened up the runtime fabric uh, you have to go to inbound traffic same old procedure add a certificate upload a file select on choose file so this is the PEM file on open the certificate details should appear here let's go to private key and here is the private key and the password you'll need to enter okay now click on add certificate and the certificate is added successfully now it's time for us to delete the old certificate let me delete this i don't need that anymore perfect now i can save and deploy so it shows request sent successfully let's give it a couple of moment it should finish applying all right the changes have been applied now it's time to go back to the application and change the ingress so let's head to the application so here's the application let me go to the ingress tab and i need to change the domain right now because uh, we have the new domain so let's change this domain and apply changes all right the domain has uh, the application url has changed but the configuration it's yet to be applied let's give it a couple of minutes all right the changes have been applied let's head over to postman and this time let me remove this host and trigger a request and i'm getting a successful response if you observe the host part was unchecked and the response comes properly so in this way when you use a vanity domain uh, the certificate also should have the same common name so we have resolved the problem because earlier we were using the uh, other domain name which was which was basically given by aws and it was local to that particular vpc but this is an external facing domain name and we created the certificate accordingly now if you want to have your own vanity domain basically you have to alias this so even in uh, in case if you if you are applying that alias you'll make an entry in the route 53 and you'll also have to make the changes in that certificate so the point where it asks for alias you'll have to give that alias and it should work perfectly fine so that's all for the load balancer part i hope you found the video useful thanks for watching